I went to the French Grand Prix at the Circuit Paul Ricard in Le Castellet, and this is my experience. So this was my first Grand Prix in longer than I would have liked. I'd booked to go to the 2020 British Grand Prix when you know what meant that there were no fans at the track. I booked Paul Ricard because it's a part of France I haven't been to before and I thought it'd be fun. I'm going to cover travel, accommodation, facilities and the track itself. So let's get into the video. Before I get into the main portion of the video, I just want to mention that I know after Austria there was a lot of talk about fans being uncomfortable and reports of sexual harassment. And I just wanted to comment on my experience at France. I didn't notice anyone in the crowd doing anything bad to another, another member of the crowd. Nobody seemed to cheer when somebody crashed out. I mean, of course, Charles crashed out in the race and a French crowd isn't going to cheer a monogas driver when they crash. But there didn't seem to be any bad behaviour, any nasty business going on so from that point of view I just wanted to say it's been a positive experience for me I know that I'm probably not the person that's going to be the target of that but I was looking out for it and I didn't see anything bad happen. So firstly travel I stayed in Marseille and I got the shuttle bus that was provided by the Grand Prix organizers between Marseille and the track. Um, it was pretty good on the first couple of days it got progressively worse throughout the weekend as more and more people we're going to the Grand Prix track, so that's to be expected. On the Sunday, I had a 30 minute wait for the bus and it took me two hours to travel to the track. Uh, on Google Maps, it said it was about a 30 minute journey and on the first day, it took me about an hour when there was a lot less traffic. On the way back, I left pretty sharpish after the race had finished and I had little to no wait, maybe five, 10 minutes to get on a, on a coach. And again, it was two hours back to Marseille. I believe Toulon is closer to the track, uh, but I decided to stay in Marseille because it's closer to the airport. Uh, and so I don't know how much shorter the journey would have been out of the circuit, but I think there's one road or two roads out. So everyone was congested in the same traffic. I had a pretty good experience with the travel. I'd heard some horror stories from, I believe it was 2018 and 2019, uh, where it's taking people four plus hours to get out of the circuit. Uh, it seemed pretty well organized. There was lots of different modes of transport. It was all divided up and people was able to get to where they needed to and there was plenty of staff on hand. Uh, so that, from that point of view, it was a really good experience. In terms of accommodation, I stayed in the Saint Laurent district of Marseille. I would definitely say be careful where you are booking to stay because I was staying about a 20 minute walk out of the centre of town and it was a little bit of a rough area. Um, I've certainly heard that there are gangs and higher level of crime um, in Marseille and a lot of pickpockets. Personally, I wasn't affected, um, but as I was walking out of town, sometimes I felt a little bit un uncomfortable. I would suggest doing your research before staying in Marseille and possibly stay as close to the centre as possible. But my accommodation, the flat itself was really nice and it was a good price as well. So no complaints there. A quick mention on the facilities, there were long queues for food and drink. So be prepared for that, especially, I mean, the weather was baking. Uh, it was a consistent 35 degrees centigrade, so boiling hot. There were areas for shade, so it wasn't too bad, but yeah, long queues for food and drink. And as somebody, I eat gluten-free, um, and that was a little bit difficult. Uh, there were some salads that I was able to have. Um, but just be aware of that if you are eating gluten-free. Um, and if you're general admission, I would advise bringing your own food. The track fills up really early, so bringing your own food, plenty of water, just means you can guarantee your spot and you don't have to move too much. If you're in a group, then you can obviously take turns to look after the spot that you're in and you know use the toilets and grab yourself some food and drink. Uh, but that's definitely something to be aware of. So I got a general admission ticket. Um, I got there four hours before the race started and the place that I wanted to watch the Grand Prix from was about turn 10. It was already three or four people deep four hours before the race was due to start. So yeah, that was less than ideal. I was able to get a good spot in between turns 10 and turns 11. I would definitely recommend being able to get a good view of the big screens that they have there, which is right opposite me. Um, it can be quite difficult to follow along what's happening in the race if you can't watch the big screen and get an idea of the order and the times or, and when people are pitting. So 
it's pretty essential to get a, a big screen spot. Yeah, when you're general admission, it makes it a little bit more stressful because you're not guaranteed a spot. It's quite dusty. And yeah, all of my stuff got covered. So definitely going to look towards getting a uh, grandstand ticket. So next I want to talk about the track. I know it's not popular with fans. The blue and red stripes make it look a bit odd. And there are multiple track layouts making it kind of look weird on TV. But I have to admit, it looked absolutely fine in person. And where I was standing in between turns 10 and 11, it was quite a nice vantage point and I was able to see multiple corners. So in person, I didn't have any issues with the track. As I mentioned, I was stood in between turns 10 and 11. I had a really good view uh, of down the straight as well as turns 12 and 13. So you get to see a nice bit of track. There are overtakes, people make overtakes in, you know, sometimes they're side by side through turns 10 and they have multiple lines that they can take into turn 11, which gives some overtaking opportunities. So I definitely recommend that spot if you are going for general admission. I also didn't appreciate how much the track is used over the weekend. Now I know that there are support categories. Um, in 22, there was W Series and F2, but there were also open lorries with fans going around and sports cars and demonstrations. The track is in constant use and that makes a lot of sense from Formula One's point of view. Uh, they have this track for a number of days and they want to monetize it as much as possible. Um, and of course, all the fans that are going on the track are paying money and also it keeps the fans interested that are there when, you know, there's no Formula One on. You know, there's still something going around the track and keeping people interested. Otherwise, I believe people would get a little bit more uh, restless. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're considering going to the French Grand Prix or Paul Ricard, I have unfortunately heard that it might be the last time we're at Paul Ricard or have a French Grand Prix for a while, uh, which seems a bit of a surprise to me when we've got two French Grand Prix drivers and a French Formula One team. Let me know in the comments below if you'd be disappointed to see it go or if there's another track in France that you would like to see. I know Many Cours is popular with the fans. If you enjoyed the video, please consider dropping a like and subscribe for more of our own content. And why don't you check out my video on why I think we've seen the first signs that Mick Schumacher is going to be just like his father, Michael. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.